Okay, let's talk about something pretty wild. What if you could have the raw power of an AI supercomputer, not in some far-off data center, but sitting right there on your desk? Today, we are diving deep into a new machine from NVIDIA that makes that exact promise, the DGX Spark. So NVIDIA is coming out swinging, calling this the world's first at-your-desk AI supercomputer. Now, that is a seriously bold claim. So we're going to figure out if this is just a really, really powerful new PC or if it's truly a whole new kind of machine for the age of AI. So what's the big idea here? What is NVIDIA actually trying to do? Well, they're aiming for nothing less than a fundamental shift in how artificial intelligence gets made. And that vision comes straight from the top. The idea is to take the kind of power that used to be locked away behind the walls of massive, expensive data centers and put it directly into the hands of millions of developers, researchers, and even students. It's really all about breaking that dependency on remote machines. I mean, imagine it. No more waiting in line for a shared cluster. No more latency. Just you, your ideas, and the power to build, test, and tweak your models instantly. It's all about making that innovation cycle way faster and way more hands-on. All right, so you make a promise that big. You better have the hardware to back it up. So what kind of horsepower are we talking about here? Let's pop the hood and look at the specs that have got everybody talking. The heart of this thing is the brand new Grace Blackwell architecture. Now, the spec that immediately jumps out is that 128 gigabytes of unified memory. That word, unified, is so important. It means the CPU and GPU share one giant pool of memory, so you're not wasting time slowly shuffling data back and forth. It's a purpose-built, all-in-one AI machine. And here it is, the number that makes you go, whoa, one petaflop. For perspective, that's a quadrillion calculations per second. It gets there using some clever new tricks like FP4 and sparsity, which basically tells the computer to focus its immense power only on the most important parts of an AI calculation. It's desktop performance that sounds like science fiction. So what does all that power actually let you do? Well, it means a developer can go through the entire workflow, the whole shebang on one machine. You can prototype your new idea, fine tune a massive 70 billion parameter model, and then actually run and test a state of the art model, all without ever leaving your chair. That is the dream. Now with specs like that, you would think the reaction would be universal applause, right? Well, not exactly. Once the full details came out, the internet did what the internet does and a pretty passionate debate kicked off. Yeah, the moment that full spec sheet hit the web, the tech community got out their digital magnifying glasses and started picking it apart. They wanted to know, is this thing really as revolutionary as it sounds? And one number in particular really stood out. And this right here, this is the core of the whole argument. Let's use an analogy. The DGX Spark gives you this enormous 128 gigabyte swimming pool of memory. Fantastic, right? But the community immediately pointed out that the pipe you use to fill and drain that pool, the memory bandwidth, is, well, it's surprisingly narrow. So the big question is, who cares how big your pool is if you can only move the water at a trickle and leave it to a Reddit user to just cut right to the chase? This comment nails the community's concern. Comparing the memory speed to a 4060 Ti, which is a great mainstream gaming card, really puts the question into focus. Can you call it a supercomputer if a key spec is in the same ballpark as a consumer GPU? And for developers doing very specific data-heavy work, this isn't just an academic debate. For this user who's constantly moving huge chunks of data around, that one number on the spec sheet could be an absolute deal breaker. It raised real fears that it might actually be slower for their work than what they already have. And for some folks who had been following this project for a while, back when it was called Project Digits, the reaction was just, well, simple disappointment, a real bummer. The dream didn't quite match the reality of the specs for them. So this brings us right to the heart of it. Who is this machine actually for? Is the community's critique the final word here? Or is it possible they're missing the point? But hold on, because that is not the whole story. Not by a long shot. Early adopters are painting a very different picture. 
For researchers like Dr. Finch, the real bottleneck isn't memory bandwidth. It's just getting access to a powerful machine at all. For them, turning days of waiting into hours of actual work, that is an absolute game changer. And it's not just for solo researchers. For small startups, the DGX Spark is a lifeline. It gives them access to serious enterprise-grade horsepower without having to spend a fortune building and maintaining their own data center. It's power without the massive overhead. So what's the verdict? Look, the DGX Spark is not for everybody. It's a scalpel, not a Swiss Army knife. If your work lives and dies on raw memory bandwidth, this probably isn't the machine for you. But if your biggest problem is just getting access to a huge memory pool with the full official NVIDIA software stack and a quiet box that fits on your desk, then this thing was built specifically for you. And if you've been listening and thinking, you know what, that sounds exactly like what I need, then you really need to pay attention to this last part. Because this piece of the puzzle is very, very urgent. To thank the first people to jump on board, NVIDIA is offering a pretty massive early adopter discount. The price on a single unit drops by a full thousand dollars, from four grand down to three. And for small teams, a two unit bundle gets a three thousand dollar price cut, from eight grand down to five. That's a serious incentive. But here's the thing you absolutely need to know. This special pricing, this early adopter deal, has been extended, but it ends this weekend. And these are for the limited launch stock. Once they're gone, they're gone. The clock is officially ticking. So it all comes down to this. The DGX Spark is a focused, it's a powerful, and yeah, it's a controversial machine. For some developers, it's a game changer. For others, it's a hard pass. With that early adopter discount ending this weekend, it leaves a very clear question for anyone out there on the fence. Is this the right tool for you right now?